more aware we are of the tentacles and roots and all of that, the better we are as individuals and within our families and even within society. the people who are out there purporting to help reporting on estrangement, writing on it, etc. <clears throat> they don't listen. Hi guys, today we are going to um, talk with a very special guest, Sherry McGregor. She is, as most of you know, the author of the Done With Crying series and um, also the uh, founder of the Rejected Parents website. We're going to bring Sherry on. We're going to have some discussion. I've got some questions from some of my listeners. And uh, so so we'll we'll get with it. Hello, Sherry. How are you today? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm so excited to be here. Oh, I am too. This has been uh, been a little bit in the making, so I know that uh, yeah. I know uh, it'll be helpful for people, just like your book is. And um, it's just kind of nice to put a face with a name and you know hear you sometimes. So I think it's going to be really exciting. So well, I've got um, my morning not enough sleep face on but but okay it's the real uh, me <laughs> hey that's what that's what we want we want the real you so okay. um well why don't we start out you telling us a little bit about yourself well um you know when my kids were younger i always said oh i'm a mom of five and i was so proud of that you know and um people called me an earth mother I was one of those kind of moms that just did everything with my kids. I worked at home before working remotely was, you know, a thing. And so I, I was with my, my kids all the time. Uh, I nursed them for 10 straight years because I had them all so close together. So um, that's a little bit about my background. I have a, you know, I have an educational background in psychology and human behavior. I work as a life coach. Um, I've been a writer for decades, gosh, over 30 years. And so, um, yeah, that's a little bit about me. I'm a dog lover and I love house plants and gardening and, you know, yeah. <laughs> Good. Um, so a lot of people, I mean, if someone's not familiar with your work who might be listening, um, what would you say to them if they ask you, what qualifies you to speak on estrangement? How, how, is, how did you come to do that? Yeah, um, well, it's not a question that I get very often. And I think that's because my work really stands for itself. Um, I think people who go to my website get pretty quickly that, oh my goodness, she gets this. And the reason is because I do have one estranged adult child. Um, and that's a long-term thing now. And so, um, you know, I mean, I did mention my educational background. Um, when this happened to me, there was basically nothing out there that I found helpful. I found a lot of judgment and shame. And um, I found a lot of people, well, excuse me, let me just turn that off. I found a lot of people who talked at parents and kind of lectured them. And, um, you know, when you're hurting and, and feeling horrible and looking at everything you could have possibly done wrong, right? Because that's what most of us do. That's really hurtful. <laughs> and so, um, you know, as a life coach and a person who I've always had this sort of gumption where nothing will win you know no i'm gonna succeed i'm gonna be okay it's just sort of who i am as a person and so i basically coached myself beyond this and how to move beyond it and how to have a happy life and a, and a meaningful life and um you know so i kind of shared my story in the first book uh, which is basically a love story to my estranged yeah. adult son other than you know, I mean, I did have a lot of insight from other parents for that book and there's exercises in there and things, but I really think the work just stands for itself. I mean, I think people really notice right away that this is genuine material that can help them. And the books are award-winning books. 
you know, the, the, the latest yeah. one, this, this one, the second one, this one won an award in the psychology category for the, uh, you know, the esteemed Benjamin Franklin awards. And so I'm pretty proud of that. They're not fluff books at all. They include a lot of research. Yeah. So yeah. did I answer your question? I think you did. Yeah. Yeah. I think you did. Um, so obviously you're, um, uh, you've experienced it. So can you, do you want to tell us um, what prompted you to write the books? Well, really just um, kind of what I said. I mean, there was just nothing out there that I found useful. I found a lot of hurtful material. And like I said, people who talked at parents and it was always about the parents trying to figure out a way to reconnect. And, you know, I had been down that road and I uh, was unsuccessful. And there comes a point where you have to say, all right, well, I'm gonna shelve that now and get on with my life because this, this isn't really about me. It's about that person and their ideas. And so, you know, and these are adults, these aren't children. And in fact, um, you know, that's one of the things that I think is misunderstood about estrangement is oftentimes people think that it's this, you know, well, they're 18 year olds or they're 20 year olds. You know, I hear from parents every day who have 50 year olds who suddenly decided, you know, that this, this was for them. So, um, yeah, so that's really what prompted me to write the book because there were so many people out there hurting, you know, I, I saw the blog entries, I saw the comments. And when I started my website, um, that was really telling because people just came forward and, and, you know, were just so willing to share their stories and, um, and, and the pain. And so I knew there was a need and I wanted to help. Um, and do your kids know about the books? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it would be impossible for them not to know at this point. You know, um, I mentioned that I was a writer for many, many years and I wrote with them at home, you know, that was what I did. And so, um, wrote for all kinds of magazines and, you know, websites and organizations and all just, you know, you name it, I've done it. And so, um, I think to them, it's kind of, well, this is what mom does. This is one of the things that mom does to, to figure things out even, you know? And so, um, yes, they know about the books. They're actually very supportive of them. In fact, recently, uh, one of my sons asked me, mom, can I, you know, can, do you have any books laying around? Cause I want to give them to a friend. And, um, that's happened to me a couple of times now over the years where they have given my books or recommended them, you know, to friends of theirs that they knew both, um, you know, sometimes siblings of someone who's estranged who wants to help their parents or um, people who are estranged because they do have friends of all ages, which I think is wonderful. So, um, so yes, they Aww. do know about the books and they're very supportive of them. Have they read them all the way through? A couple of them have read the first book. I know a couple of the other ones have read bits and pieces and I think it was painful for them to read, you know, and in Done With The Crying, the first book, one of the things that I talk about is the fact that one of my ways of coping was to say, I'm fine, I'm getting on with things, you know, and so I organized events and we went to the fair and everything else. And so I hid my pain from them, you know, as much as I could. I mean, there comes a point where you can't, you've got to let it out, you've got to talk about it. But, um, but yeah, I think, I think reading the, the books, you know, it's hard for them because it takes them back to a time when mom was very sad, you know, and, and not herself. So, but I think they're very proud of me and, and I appreciate that. I'm, I'm so grateful for that. Well, that's, that's, that's really great. I'm, you know, I've read some of your second uh, one, you know, like some of it's really powerful. Um, can you briefly discuss your ideas regarding the emotional scars that you mentioned in the book? Well, um, you know, just like when we have a physical injury, um, even when it heals, there might be echoes that come up from time to time. If we're 
if we bang it on something or if we, um, you know, if we're tired, if we're sick, sometimes old scars will hurt, right? And um, it's similar with emotional scars. I mean, there are tracks that form you know, in our brains and in our thinking. And so when we are vulnerable, tired, maybe we're reminded things get banged around because there's an event coming up or something that reminds us, you know, so those scars are there and they can get re-triggered. And if, and if we're aware of those, it's easier to recognize what's happening and move ourselves beyond that and not get back stuck in some sort of a rumination loop you know, or, or some other right. old habit of doubting ourselves and, and feeling bad. You know, yesterday I sent out my newsletter because I have that, that free newsletter that goes out about once a month. And I, I called it the stubbed toe issue, which is a little weird. But the day before I had stubbed the toe on my right foot. And for some reason, all night long, it was my left big toe that was aching. And it was like, okay, this is silly, but really there's pain channels that come up inside of us. And so, you know, so it was this old injury because years ago I had broken that toe pretty badly. And so it was reminding me, oh yeah, don't be thinking about the right toe. It's this one that hurts. And it's the same if we have something bad happen in our lives, some tragedy or some relational disruption or whatever, you know, something that makes us sad. We're reminded of other things that are sad and estrangement is definitely one of those. I mean, it, it's an injury, you know? What a way to get inspiration. Oh yeah. 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 But our, you know, our pain can be inspirational in a way. I mean, we can learn from the bad things that happen to us. Right. And it builds resilience in us. Sure. So yeah. Okay. Um, so besides your own books, is there something that like you, before you started to write your estrangement books, a place that you went for help? You know, like I said, I searched everywhere and I didn't find much. I found a lot of snippets. And back then there wasn't a lot of talk about estrangement. You know, it wasn't as big. And, and when there was, it was mostly just, well, you know, what'd you do? I mean, it was basically, what did you do? You caused this, something in your parenting. And you still see that sort of stuff out there. There was one book that I read at that time. It's a book by, I believe the author's name is Holly Kenley. I don't have it in front of me right now, but it was on betrayal. And I found that was helpful. Um, in my books, I do mention some other books. And so, um, you know, that that's, um, you know, that would be a place for people to go to to find out. Um, these days, I try to kind of stay out of the estrangement pace, place uh, space when it comes to uh, reading uh, because, you know, I can't make my whole life about estrangement. And also, I hear from people every day. You know, I receive letters, emails every day of my life. And so I kind of get the experts, you know, because I really feel like parents and the people who've gone through this are the experts. I agree. Um, and like with you, I didn't have a whole lot. When I first started looking, I didn't find a whole lot of us talking about it. It was a few professionals. And so it was from a much different standpoint. So, yeah. Um, and I really admire you for stepping out into this well, area because um, you know, I, I hear from people sometimes who wonder about that, you know, yeah. they, other writers talk to me and they're like, well, I, I would love to talk more about this, but I'm, I'm afraid to, right. you know, and that's one of the things that as our, as our lives move forward, you know, do we want to live based on what other people might think, you know, I mean, at some point we kind of have to stand on our own and say, look, this happened, but it's not what you think. And, and right. by doing right. that, I mean, I think that by stepping out, we have really helped estrangement to be talked about more. It's not as much of a taboo subject, you know? I agree. And so I'm proud of that. I think that's great. And I think you should be too. I am. I, it's definitely a, a labor of love. So, yeah. Um, so um, I remember reading the story 
uh, the excerpt in your book about the, uh, the blog about the boat. It was pretty powerful. Did that come from you or was that from a reader or? Well, that, um, I originally wrote that story, the boat for the, the website and it's not a factual story in that, you know, somebody gave it to me. It, it yeah. really represents, it's representative of the process that it takes sure. to really realize what's happened and recognize what's being done to you. And then to swim to shore and get, you know, and figure out your life from there. And um, that blog post was so very popular that when I wrote the second book, that's why I took that piece and put it in that book and expanded it some. And it's, it, you know, it's in there um, with a, a bigger discussion about resilience because it is a picture of, of resilience and yeah. we all have it. <clears throat> Every one of us possesses resilience, you know? And so in the book, I go into developing that for yourself more because a lot of people think well you either have it or you don't but we all have it we just maybe haven't learned to um, develop it we haven't looked at what it takes you know and so there's a bunch of different areas that i talk about in there um because we all do possess uh resilience to different degrees in different ways and um i have been so inspired Inspired by some of the people that I have talked to that are just, you know, people that have lives that have been much more troubled than mine, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and so, and they're able to look at the resources that are available to them. And, you know, some of those are digging deep within ourselves. And, and so I'm inspired every day by people. And I, you know, so anyway, that's why I brought that story there. It's not a factual story. It's a metaphorical story. And sure. one of the sure. things that I try to do at rejectedparents.net is present things that are fun because, yeah. you know, people want to be entertained, right? And we can't just, it, it would be so dull for me I mean, there's 10 years worth of material at my website. So I've been writing on this topic for a very long time. And wow. if I were to just write straight up, estrangement is this, here's what's happened. It's so sad, blah, 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 get on with your life. You know, any of that, it would be really boring for me. And so one of the things that I've tried to do is just, you know, change it up a little. So often on the website, you'll find things that are, um, just the looking at things in a different way or from a different perspective or with, um, you know, using metaphors and analogies to change it up. And it gets people thinking in new ways too, which I think is sure important because sure we can get into our old habits, you know, which, oh, sure. um, sure. when we can get good habits instead. So, so yeah, so that's kind of where that story came from. I just, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm a pretty creative person. I like to have fun. And yeah. so, yeah. yeah. In the book you mentioned, there were over 50,000 people that had so far contributed their, either their story or, or, you know, comments or whatever. Um, I don't know how long ago this book was released, but is, is there an updated number? Are there, uh, do you have any idea if that's changed or? Well, the 50,000 figure really was the number of people who had answered my survey. And that survey at the website was put up, um, I believe, at the end of 2013. And so um, okay. that number was the number when the Beyond Done with the Crying went to print in 2021. The, um, the actual contributions of people's comments at the website, people's emails to me, um, additional interviews that I've done by phone and so forth, those are much bigger and I don't have a number. I actually, um, I mean, not probably hundreds of thousands. The, the oh, no. traffic to the website is quite large. Yeah. Um, so, you know, hundreds of thousands of people have come on, uh, read. Um, of course, not all of them have commented, but, um, right. you know, but I have received a lot of emails. So I, I would be guessing cool. if I put a number out there, but I'm sure it's very much, it's, it's significant and more than that. And... 
Um, that survey, I actually stopped that survey when the book came out. And um, that survey was for parents, grandparents, step parents, adoptive parents. Um, there was an additional survey for the siblings oh. who oh. were affected by estrangement um, of an adult child by parents. And these were adult siblings, of course, that didn't interview children or, you know, but right. that was a separate right. survey. And, you know, I can't remember the number that it's in the book, but, um, but I, I felt that it was very important to share the sibling perspective because they, uh, you know, the siblings really suffer in this, you know, the ones that stay loyal to the parents, sometimes they walk a tightrope between the estranged sibling and the parent, yeah. or they, um, you know, they feel a deeper responsibility. Some of them are left all alone in it, you know, or if, if there's very young siblings, they, they get a little older and then they have a lot of questions, you know, that maybe need to be answered because they weren't old enough to understand what was going on. They just know they have this, this sibling out there that, you know, um, is rarely spoken of, let's say. So, um, yeah. so yeah, yeah, so there, there was a separate survey. There was also another survey that I did on uh, for parents who had reconciled. And oh, that was oh. a really interesting one because what, what happened was that a large number of people got about halfway through that survey um, and when I say survey, all of my surveys have always been, yes, there's questions that they tick off boxes, but also huge text boxes so they can tell their story. And I think people who have done those surveys, the feedback that I've received is that, you know, those were really helpful just to share their story on there. But um, the survey for the parents who had reconciled, many of them realized when they got about halfway through the survey, they weren't really reconciled. And so they would write in, I'm, I'm not going to write anymore here because I realize I'm not reconciled. I may have reconnected, but that's a different thing. Reconnection that's is true. a completely uh, different thing than, than you know, truly recon reconciling, which involves levels of trust. And, um, you know, so, uh, yeah, so that's the surveys out there. I'm actually working on another survey right now. It's not live yet, um, but it will be um a little bit different not just estrangement because you know estrangement is misunderstood i mean people think estrangement they think oh just a cutting off and you know it it they're often there's just so many other things that go with that yeah for sure well you know and one of the reason i bring up the number of people um is partially just to for, again for anybody that's new that might just be running across this that there's lots of people out there. There's lots of, you're not the only one, um, like we all thought in the beginning. So, um, so I wanted to just kind of put that out there to people. Yeah. You know, Donald, I'm actually, um, it, it always amazes me that at this point, I still hear from a couple of people a month, that feeling is still out there and, and it's an awful feeling. It is. I, to me, that was like, the biggest aha is when I realized it, it wasn't necessarily just me. So, and a lot of people have said that, that I've talked to. So. You don't well, feel like this. Oh, well, go ahead. I Abby. like in the book, how you, you, you talk about it's adv advice from the trenches. So that's a interesting, interesting way to, interesting way to put it. Um, do you also find that with the people that you've talked to, unless you've been through it, that you really don't, they don't really understand, you know, like you like people saying, oh, you're, well, like you were just saying, oh, you're estranged, just kind of get over it. Have you heard a lot of that kind of thing? People just not understanding what it was, is. I hear it from parents all the time. I hear it from parents saying, uh, parents tell me just what you said, that unless you've been through it, you can't get it. And I think to a degree that's true, you know, because yeah. it, it's just a term, you know, it, it's just a, it's just a term. And, and for me, I knew that people cut each other off, but I had never heard that term you right. know, before. And so it is just a term that's out there. 
And I think that um, that doesn't mean that if somebody hasn't had this happen to them, that they can't possibly help another person because, right. you know, we all, well, maybe not all of us, but I do hear from parents and, and I myself had one friend in particular who was, you know, just by listening, just by understanding that, oh my God, I know you are a great mom, Sherry. That helped me. So although she couldn't necessarily understand it from a, you know, a, a, a deep level, um, you know, she, she was able to help me in, in that way and understand because she listened, you know, she listened. And so like the, from the trenches, um, the reason I say that is because, as I said at the outset, I think a lot of the people who are out there purporting to help, reporting on estrangement, writing on it, et cetera, <clears throat> they don't listen, you know? And so one of the things that I have always found very important, and one of the things that I hope I can continue to do is always be listening because I want to stay abreast of what is needed, you know? Um, yeah, so so the from the trenches, that very much is, you know, I learn, I learn from the people that talk to me. Yeah. It, there's yeah. a conversation that goes on. And so, um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, do, do you give room when you're talking to somebody that there sometimes are good reasons that a child or a parent may decide to estrange aside from the obvious abuse situations, but. Uh, well, you know, the term good, that could be construed a lot of different ways. So um, I, do I think that there's sometimes when estrangement is probably the best answer? Maybe, you know, sometimes yeah. yes. Um, I don't really talk a lot about this in terms of, you know, I don't write in my books. The, the parents that come to me have been kind, supportive, loving parents for the most part. There are some who have made mistakes. And in fact, in Beyond Done with the Crying, that's why I included that chapter called There Are No Good Parents. And I gave several scenarios where parents had come to me with what they considered bigger mistakes or problems that they had made. So there are sometimes parents who, who make, you know, bigger mistakes and can understand why their child or, you know, um, but there again, are they to pay penance for the rest of their lives for a mistake they made, you know? So, um, so that chapter was really to help, help those parents. And, um, so it's not something that I talk about all the time, you know, um, and it wouldn't really be for me to judge anyway, you know? Um, so okay. yeah, I mean, I suppose there are good reasons and I know that there are, uh, some people out there that say, you know, well, I mean, there's, there's a lot of therapists. In fact, I hear this every day who are telling adult children to the best answer is to cut off and not only therapists, but there's a strange adult children on the internet who are, you know, they have a faction of people that follow them and they're telling them that, and, you know, cults are alive and well in our culture, which um, might surprise some people, but they are alive and well in, in a, many different forms. And on the parent side, you know, um, there does come a point for some parents where they make that decision that I, I just can't be in this roller coaster anymore. I've got to get off because I'm, it's hurting me, you know, it's hurting me. So, um, yeah. So uh, while it's not something I talk about regularly, I think that, um, you know, it, it's just not for me to decide. Right. I, and I tell, I tell people all the time, you know, you both in the group and people I've talked to that in the end, you have to do what's right for you, whether that's continuing to try or taking a step back. So, um, cause nobody could really do that, make that decision for you. So, 
Yeah, and you know, the other thing about that is that sometimes we think that if we make this decision today, that this has to be a forever thing. And that's not necessarily true. I mean, you can yeah. shelve all of this for a while and, you know, likely it, it, it will probably still be there if you want to return to it, you so, know, and sometimes distance is a good thing to get a little distance from it and say, okay, well, I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna do any of that now. I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna live my life and, right. and um, you know, but you could always pick it up. Um, and in your experience or estimation, do you, how do you feel? Cause some people say, oh, we should love our kids unconditionally, no matter what. And I mean, I understand where that comes from, but um, just you personally, how, how do you feel about that? Well, you know, again, unconditional love, it's one of those terms that could mean different things to different people. Um, even love, you know, does love mean that we have to forever be involved on a day-to-day -day basis or even a monthly basis or even interact with someone? You know, we, we could look at that in a lot of different ways. And that's one of those philosophical questions, isn't it? You know, yeah. and, and one of the things that I have seen is that sometimes people who have this strong belief about that, they... Um, it's almost a, it keeps them stuck. It can keep them stuck in this loop of abuse and cruelty and hurt. And often, or well, maybe not often, but I know that sometimes that, that um, belief comes from someone else. You know, sometimes it comes from somebody else telling them yeah. what they should do. And uh, I don't ever want to be that person telling yeah. somebody what yeah. they should do. I agree with you. Each person needs to decide that for themselves. So, um, you know, I would never down anybody for, for having that belief. But um, at some point, if they're hurting and hurting and hurting and being re-hurt and being stuck in this situation where they forgive, forget, and are used and manipulated and abused. No one would ask unconditional love at that level from anybody else, you know, in any abusive situation, yeah. abusive, yeah. manipulative, you know, it wouldn't be asked. Right. I mean, whether it's the, you know, children or the parents. <laughs> so at some point you have to take care of and, and just be kind to yourself. So my opinion. Yeah, well, um, yeah, I, I know that my parents have been gone for many, many, many years and I can't imagine estranging from them. Were they perfect yeah. people? No. Were they abusive? No. So, you know, I mean, I can't answer from the perspective of, of someone else and I, and I wouldn't sure. tell them what to do. Well, yeah, and as adults, I mean, I have four adult children, you know, that are in right. contact with me all the time. And um, they have their lives and they live them. And I may not always, you know, agree with everything they do, same as they may not always agree with everything I do. Do we need to tell each other that all the time? No. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, the, you know, the, the, they're individuals. And um, I think there's mutual respect in relationships. And, you know, so, mm -hmm. and and that's a good thing. Yeah. So how do you think um, estrangement changes the families out there? Well, that is um, a huge topic. And it's really why this little tagline is on this book, Essential Insights to Move the Family Forward, because, yes. you know, um, it does change families. It changes the individuals within them. It shifts all the relationships up. Um, and really, that was one of the things that made me write that second book was just that yeah. need because that was a continued question and it's extended family it's the siblings it's marital relationships it's um 
because estrangement doesn't just end everything, you know. And what I found fascinating and sad and um, I thought was important to share and and is that it even goes back into history. There's a story of one man in that book who, one father who the estrangement will bring all sorts of things to the forefront, you know, that we then get to work on. And what was discovered was that by the estrangement of his son, he, it, it was very clear that he had been lied to by the rest of his family for years. And it even brought up some like racial discrimination and things because of different fathers between him and his brother. And, and right. so, right. you know, it shifted everything. And then it shifted for that particular man, who in the family will I not trust anymore? versus who will I continue to have a relationship with? So, it, you know, estrangement is often catching, you know, and yeah. and in that yeah. case, um, if I remember correctly, it's in the book, he, um, he had an aged aunt that he stays in contact with because, you know, she, she she's an older woman and, and he loved her. And, you know, she grew up in a different time and basically just was swept along by the family, you know, and what they're, um, but there were other estrangements that, that came out of his estrangement with his son. And so, you know, it does change the family in so many ways. And that was one of the reasons why I brought the siblings in. Um, and there's also some information in the book when, one parent is the estranged one, you know, and um, while I feel very strongly that a united front is important, not every couple does that, you right. know, and, right. and for varying reasons, you know, and so there is some information to help people who have decided that they're going to go along with that. And um, yeah, so, I mean, it changes so many things, even for a parent who has one estranged adult child, then, you know, with the, with the children that remain in contact, there can be a lot of fear, Sure. you know, sure. and that can change behavior. If we're not careful, then it could change how we act with them. And maybe we're, we don't, you know, take our parent role, you know, as uh, maybe we don't we don't act the way we, we would want to, let's put it that yeah. way. So, yeah. so yeah, how doesn't it affect the family? <laughs> Probably a better question. Yeah, well, it would be an easier one because I'm not sure there is, you know, probably probably no way, you know. Yeah. But I think awareness is so important. I mean, the more aware we are of the tentacles and roots and all of that, the better we are as individuals and within our families and even within society to move forward. So. I agree. I even, I interviewed, um, last year sometime, uh, probably around this time last year with a young man who wasn't estranged, is an estranged adult child. So it was, it's very interesting, um, to hear, hear his perspective and that it wasn't just that there was thought behind it and, you know, that kind of thing. Cause you know, we never know, but well, this has been really, really cool. I do have a couple of questions that some of my listeners um, uh, wrote in because uh, I told okay. them I would be talking to you and I wanted to put that out there. I thought that would be kind of a neat way for them to be able to interact and uh, get some of their specific best you can, obviously. Um, sure. So and I will tell you, Donald, that on my website, I do have a column. It's called Ask Sherry McGregor. And I do oh, take on cool. some of the questions. Usually I try to pick the ones that are common that I hear often, right. you know, right. Makes but, sense. Um, Makes but anyway, sense. yeah, I'm gay. Okay, cool. Okay. So the first one, actually, I'll put their handle on the screen. Her question is, she says, I have two I have twin estranged daughters in their 40s. After three times of cutting me off, first when they were teens, again in their 20s, and then three or four years ago again, I just don't trust them and don't feel like I want to want reconciliation again. Is it a bad thing when a parent feels love but doesn't want them around because it's hurtful? 
drama and exhausting to keep waiting and trying just because we're the parents doesn't mean we should be treated so callously am i wrong living our life without playing their heartbreak games no trust left I've kind of touched on that but if you want to yeah um is it bad you know again that's not up to me to judge is it wrong not up to me to judge it's up to her she's in her situation she knows what she's been through she knows the drama probably what i'm hearing behind that question is that as time has gone on she realizes that it's harder for her to recover from these scenarios. It's harder not only to see a good outcome in, in terms of a reconciliation or them being nice, we'll just put right. it that way, them right. being nice to her, respectful of her. And, and by respectful, I don't mean, yes, ma'am. I mean, right. you know, just uh, human I decency. honor you as a human being. I'm nice to you and you're nice to me. We have a regular relationship. but. Um, you know, it is true that as we age, uh, our biology is different. We uh, do not recover physiologically from stressful events. That's been proven. I talk about that in the book. And so for her, she's probably noticing that. You know, I talked to a mother just the other day who told me that she's beginning to realize that it takes her about three days to recover physically from one of these drama events we'll just call it right. that and so right. you know it, it comes down to a lot of people start to look at they do the math you know years ago i used to joke with my brother we'd say don't do the math talking about <laughs> lifespan and it's like well you know you start to do the math and you think well how many years do i have left how many days do i want to spend of those years trying to recover you know and so um you know, so I, I I completely understand where she's coming from, and I think she needs to do what's best for her. Ask herself those questions. Ask herself those questions. Just yesterday on the website at rejectedparents.net, I did answer a question that kind of got at some of these and offered some questions to look at your own scenario and see, because, um, you know, it is it, it is individual. It is individual and estrangement being one of these terms that it, it can mean so many different things, you know, even in the research, that's, um, it's not a term that is defined the same per study. And so, no. uh, you know, one person's estrangement might mean that they just, their, their kid moved to another country and hasn't talked to them and one it's, you know, where another one's means that they call them up at 3 a.m. and, you know, or, 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 you know, leave, leave mean texts or whatever, or, right, you know, right. and are very cruel or ask for money all the time. I mean, it could just, right. It could go just on and on. So, um, so it is up to each individual to kind of think that through. And, yeah. um, I understand where she's coming from because, you know, how much longer does she want to go be on this roller coaster and allow it, you know, and allow another adult or in her case, I guess it was a few adults. Yeah. You know, yeah. Well, and I think that almost basically answers the next one as well, because um, Wendy wrote in asking, when do you give up trying to reconnect? And it's a lot of those same things you just mentioned, I think, are, are fit in that scenario. So, Yeah, and you know, in this book, and Beyond Done, I got into some things about, um, you know, the chasing that parents do. Right. And, you know, when you're chasing somebody, trying to reach out, trying to reconnect, and you're being rebuffed, not only does it hurt over and over again and make you feel worthless to that person, but, you know, you're, if you're chasing somebody, you're already in the losing position. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, when we were kids, we played those chasing games and nobody ever wanted to be the one that, you know, you wanted to be the one hiding, right? I mean, just, right. so, yeah, because it was the, that was the toughest position, you know? So, you know, do you always want to be in that losing position where you're chasing someone? And then what does it do to your self-esteem? What does it do if you're forever in that position and they're just, you know, they've got their back to you and you're, 
yeah. you're chasing chasing after them. That that's really tough. So again, you're right. It is a similar question, and um, it's not up to me to decide. Yeah, I mean, we've all got to ask ourselves those questions and many others, I'm sure, um, to decide how we want to how we want to proceed. Everybody's a little different. Every kid's a little different. Every parent's a little different. So. Um, so unfortunately there's no, uh, no rule book. As I tell people all the time with kids, there was no rule book, you know, and with, with this, yeah. it's kind of the same. And, you know, in the books, these are questions that are explored and people are allowed oh. to think about their own situation in very deep ways and come to their own conclusions. And I guess that kind of gets at the front of the ter trenches. Yeah. material too because the scenarios included and you know i wish i could have included them all if i if i had tried to do that you know which is why the, oh my gosh yeah or a series of encyclopedia you know yeah a never-ending revised and revised <laughs> right so so yeah so um cool. yeah sorry to cut well off. <laughs> no no worries um i I really appreciate uh, you coming on today. I I will tell everyone out there if, if they don't know of, if for some reason you have not run across Sherry's work yet, go to her website. I'll link it in the description. It's on the screen for a moment um, and you. reach out to her. The books are great. I've talked to so many people. Most of the people I've talked to have read or at least know of these books and they're very very helpful so i Thank would you. greatly encourage that means a lot to me and i love hearing from people because you know i hear from people who are not nice sometimes too like you said you interviewed the sure. adult child and um i hear from mean adult children often <laughs> you know who and yeah. which actually puzzles me because i'm not sure why if they want estrangement and so why are they caring that I'm helping parents get on with their lives? It doesn't make any sense to me. But anyway, I do. I need encouragement sometimes, too. So I really of course. appreciate it. And thank you so course. much, Donald. I, I just, um, you know, I I applaud you for your work. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. And, and uh, like I said, everyone, just take a look and reach out to Sherry through her website. Uh, pick up your books if you, if you possibly can. And... I think those will be very helpful to you, to you. So again, I'll thank you, Sherry. And, um, I will, um, like I said, I'll link everything in my web, in my, uh, description and okay. we'll get that uh, going. So, okay. Thank you so much.